This episode is sponsored by Evolve Bootcamp, my outdoor functional fitness program that delivers a sense of warmth, friendliness, and spirit, along with butt-kicking, hellishly fun-filled workouts that embody a caring attitude evoking the idea. Everybody that exercises outside has no boundaries and naturally evolves. Class begins at 6 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, winter, spring, summer, and fall. Mention this podcast and come by for a trial class at the Boston Common if you dare. Welcome to the Evolve WMMA podcast featuring the greatest upcoming female fighters on the planet. They are women who have gone against conventional thinking to pursue their dreams. They ins- these fighters inspire, empower, and unleash excellence within a new generation of female warriors as they rise and evolve into the best possible version of themselves through the power of mixed martial arts. Hey, 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 this is Evolve WMMA, and I'm your host, Shelley Devon. You may have seen this week's guest defend her title at Invicta 39 against tough opponent Ashley Cummins. Yeah, well, she won. But even though she won, after a fight, going all five rounds, she could not leave the cage with the belt. She had to surrender that belt because she didn't make weight. And she failed, I think, the weight cut by three quarters of a pound only because I think she started, you know girls, her period. And so she couldn't leave the cage with the belt. And I don't know about you, but I'm kind of wondering what her mindset was, you know, how does she get back, you know, you know, home and, and, you know, not only defending the belt, but you know, what happens next with her and how does she feel about it and how does she handle it? So I'd like to welcome back to the show, Invicta FC Adam Wade, former champ, Jin Yu Fry. Hey, Jen, welcome to the show. It's so good to have you back. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Oh, God, this is great. Um, great performance in Invicta last, well, almost two weeks ago now. How are you feeling since then? Um... Good, just kind of kicking back and um, trying to unwind uh, from everything and trying to catch up on uh, life in the meantime. Yeah, I bet you. What, it, was it a, a tough camp? This one. Yeah, it was, and it just it seemed like even like mentally and emotionally, just because you know the um, the cut that I had to pull from the fight in October. So it just seemed like a really long camp. It just felt like I was in camp the whole time, and mm-hmm. even though like you know I. I didn't have an exact date. And so even during the holidays, even though I wasn't like technically in camp, like I wasn't sure if it was going to be in January or February. So it was still kind of dieting and like watching, Mm -hmm. you know, what I did and trying to stay in shape because I didn't have an exact date. So like, even though it wasn't as stringent during that time, I still kind of felt like I was in the mindset. So like I said, it just, it just felt like a really, really long camp. Yeah. I mean, last time we talked, it's been over a year. I mean, it was after the Mina Grusander fight and your second, second time with her. You, you, I mean, you had lost, you know, one of the loves of your life, your little, your little dog Nano. And you went into that fight with, um, a, you know, just a lot of raw emotion, all that. So your camp this time around must have been extremely you know different but you didn't make weight and i know that's like you've had these looming things around each fight that you've had and i'm like oh my god she's got like this other thing now that is just like you know like i I feel like um hanging over her i was like that's just life like nothing's gonna ever be smooth like you want it to you know i had a lot of issues my mom was pretty ill this time and um so that was pretty stressful for this camp. So it's like, I wasn't dealing with the death of my dog, but you know, still just like a ton of like life stuff going on. Yeah. Um, We had like kind of a, we, uh, we parted ways with our gym that we had been at, you know, there was a falling out between my husband and one of the other coaches. And so like Mm -hmm. trying to juggle around, like putting together a training camp, you know, just kind of a ton of stuff going on this time. So it's like, even though didn't have that, you know, my dog passing away, I still had, kind of a lot of shit going on. Yeah, residual stuff. I mean, like, and too, if you're, you know, whatever's going on with your mom right now, too, that's that's a whole other, 
you know, like a whole other added, that, that's another full time actually thing that you're contending with as well as being a professional fighter champion and, and training for that. Now, last year, you know, 2019, we expected to probably see you. Um, I know you went um, to Japan. You had a fight over there in like June or July. Yeah, and, June. and I want to hear how that went. I actually am very, I, I don't follow Ryzen at all. Um, but um, I'd like to hear about that. But then also, you were supposed to have this fight, you know, with Ashley Cummins last year, but you had an injury. And I was like, what happened? You know, like, um, you know, last year was a tough year too, you know, after, you know, becoming champ, you know, solidifying that title, you know, fighting for, for it twice, only to this year now having to surrender it. You still, I mean, you're still to me in my mind, the champ, only you just didn't walk out of the, you know, the cage with the belt uh, this time because of the, the, the weight cut issue, which is another topic I want to get into about women and having to deal with this baloney. Cause I'm like, geez, you know, that's a big loss for you. I think on, on, you know, losing money, income, and, and, um, you know, having to abdicate your title, even though you, you won and, and, and it was, you know, three quarters, maybe three quarters of a pound weight wise. Yeah. I'm like, <clears throat> ah, you know, like, and you see on the charts in the rankings, it's, I think for Adam weight, it goes to what, 106 or something like that. So you were like 105.8 on that one. So there's, there's a lot surrounding you, young lady. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's been a while, and, well, a couple months. And, and just what I want to add is I know you want to lead an extraordinary life and you are my dear. So this is all a part of it. It's all a part of having, you know, um, a big life. I think you have a lot going on. So I'd like to address all of this if we can today, because I'm sure other people have tons of questions and, you know, like to answer them. So I don't know where you want to begin. But. <laughs> well, um. <laughs> Um, I guess we can talk about the the Japan fight. That one, um, that one was definitely like I knew going in that I was going to be fighting a Japanese champion mm. in her, you know, in her backyard in her home country uh, yeah. for a Japanese promotion. Like I kind of knew going in that the cards were stacked against me, and that um, you know, really, I was more than likely going to have to get a finish to walk away with that belt. Um, sure. But, you know, opportunity to go fight in another country, especially for a promotion as big as Ryzen, like, it's hard to turn that down. Yeah. Like, you can't win if you don't try anyway. So, yeah. you know, we went ahead and we went, and it was it was incredible, like, the amount of production that goes into that, like, the pageantry that goes into it, like, um, there was, like, it was a sold-out arena, and there was like 14,000, 15,000 people there. I mean, it was like a huge production. Um, and it's kind of crazy because they keep you backstage literally all day. Like, you get there at noon, and they're like, by the way, you know, the televised portion doesn't start till 9 o'clock at night. Oh, so, my word. Uh, yeah, so you're there all day, and they do this huge, like, opening show where they bring everybody out. They introduce them. There's, like, pyrotechnics and, like... Yeah you know, all kinds, all kinds of stuff. So you go out there and you get all pumped up and then you're like, okay, I don't fight for another um, seven hours. So, okay. I'm just going to come back here and lay down on my mat. Um, you know, we, we felt like I won the first two rounds. Mm -hmm. It like the first two rounds were largely just kickboxing. Mm -hmm. um, but the way they score things, um, it's weird. They score the fight as a whole, not round by round. So mm -hmm. like stateside anywhere else in the world, like round the rounds one and two go to me. Mm -hmm. So in the third round, I, I think she kind of feels like maybe she's down. And so she comes out super, aggress super aggressive. She ends up getting a takedown and mm -hmm. is able to maintain topside for the majority of the round. Mm -hmm. um, and then really didn't do, start to do a lot of damage until maybe, I mean, for maybe like 90 seconds, um, she started to throw shots. Because for the most part, we were kind of grappling around with position. Mm -hmm. um, and so that like aggressive 90 seconds, you know, according to Japanese rules, um, one or the fight. Wow. So, yeah. So like, this was your second time fighting her too. It's, it's, I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm probably script her name, Ayaka Hama, Hamasaki. Yeah. And, Hamasaki. Um, 
Okay, yeah. And I mean, you lost by unanimous decision this time. And the, the, the first time that you fought it was in 2016. And, and uh, she won by um, what a TKO stoppage. So right off the bat, you improved against her. The first time the doctor stepped in. And that, that, was, <sighs> that wasn't my decision. And that was, you know, and since then, I've had that physician step in and like apologize to me. He's like, you know, it was a little early. I just, yeah. I was a little nervous. I mean, cause she hit me and I was cut open. Um, you know, after winning the first round, um, you know, dominant, I won the first round dominantly yeah. and um, they came out and she, she threw kind of a wild looping punch that caught and it cut me open. And then the doctor, um, there was like 20 seconds left in the round. And I mean, the doctor didn't even like give the cut man a chance. He was just like, Oh, it's bleeding so much. Like we, we should just stop this. And he's, he's got to fight. And that's how the first one went. And that was for the, that was the first time I fought for Invictus title. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's, um, you know, going into that one. Um, but you know, all, all of a sudden done, it was still a cool experience. I still wouldn't take it back. Um, you know, we, we actually even appealed the decision. Like the matchmaker told us that we could, Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, that it didn't go anywhere, but you know, we at least had to try and, um, you know, it kind of thinks that it went that way. It was, I, it's like, I can see the pros of con pros and cons of scoring that way. Um, but it is, you know, it does have its downsides too. Like, I mean, basically you could go out, be getting, um, you know, getting whooped on for the entire fight. Mm -hmm. And if in the last 10 seconds you throw a punch and drop them, that automatically wins you the fight, like no questions asked. So, you know what I mean? Like you could get be being beaten up for 14 and a half minutes and maybe you just have like a really third stellar 30 seconds. Mm. And that will win the fight. Ay, 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 that's annoying. Insane, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. I knew what I signed up for, so. Wow, yeah, because you did mention that, you know, like uh, after, you know, this year's fight against um, um, Ashley, that um you know last year wasn't everything you had hoped for in in a fight year um you know and this year started with the you know the weight the weight cut thing you know but you still you know you still went in there and you dominated i, I don't think ashley gave enough to even come close to you know, taking the title away from you, you know, like, so, um, you know, where, where do you see things going now? Because I know you mentioned, you know, you know, is this the right weight class <laughs> now moving forward? It's still an idea that, you know, it's, I'm still just kind of like letting it marinate, kind of letting everything, the dust settle and, just kind of see what my body does naturally, like where my weight starts to sit and, um, you know, give myself some time to heal up. I've had like some nagging injuries that I've, you know, carried over into, mm -hmm. you know, from last year, mm -hmm. um, kind of give myself some time and just see, see, see how, you know, the cards, see how the cards fall. I, um, the weight cut really has started to get hard and it's started to get to where, um, it's really taking a bigger focus in my camps than what I would like. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm just, I'm. Just yeah, I mean, I saw your pictures leading up to, you know, the day of the fight. And I mean, I don't know how you could lose any, like take off anymore. I'm like, you're so lean, you're, you're so, you know, physically in shape and, and, and look, you know, like, wow, you know, where, where does it come from? And, you know, this is an issue that's been going on, you know, for some time with women. And I mean, I'm, I'm assuming, even though you don't say it, but I mean, you started your period. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, and I'm, it's like, even as hard as the weight cuts are, you know, we, we start like six weeks out. We're very, you know, very strict with it. We, um, you know, are very precise with it. And had I not, you know, had that issue, um, I, you know, I'm a hundred percent confident that I would have made 105. Um, but, it, and actually this has happened to me twice before and I've made championship weight. So, you know, I felt yeah. like this sucks. It's terrible, but you know, I, I can do it again. And just the timing of it, like I, I literally started the day before weigh-ins. Oh my God. Um, Seriously. So, yeah, that's so, when you're all bloated. I mean. <laughs> yeah. And so actually, you know, we, we track my weights all through camp for like every fight camp. So I have 
you know, an Excel sheet of all my weights. I know exactly where I'm always at. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, coming into the day before weigh-ins, like I was three pounds heavier um, from, you know, where I, where I normally am every single camp. And even, you know, from the day before I'd gained a pound, not necessarily that I gained a pound, but my body just started holding onto the water that I was right. drinking. It wasn't, you know, voiding it out like it normally does. Right. And so, you know, I had an extra three pounds that I was going to have to try to pull off. And um, so I, I mean, I was in the tub for 11 hours, cutting weight for 11 hours in the tub. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I, I mean, ever since I saw the Chris Cyborg video of her trying to cut weight, you know, to get down to something, I'm like, that's horrible. I just don't even know how you women do this to your, you know, like, and, and, and be safe. I mean, even, you know, you had commented, you know, like, I mean, you're risking, you're risking your health actually to do, to do that. Um, my next question would be, you know, like when you, I mean, did you know when you went in, obviously you knew when you stepped up on the stage that you, you weren't going to make weight, you know, uh, the night before? Well, like, so for, for whatever reason, like my scale was like, so we, the, the bathrooms in the hotel were like really small. It wasn't, the bathroom wasn't big enough that you could leave the scale in place. Cause mm -hmm. normally like I'll, I'll get my scale set up, I'll weigh on mine and then I'll weigh on the official and then the scale doesn't move all week so that I know, you know, that, that it's like the same. Cause you know, every time you move your scale, then it like needs to recalibrate and it's yeah. kind of off. Well, the, the bathrooms in the, the, the bathrooms in the hotel rooms were super tiny. So every time we needed to move the door, like close the door, we had to move the scale. So like my scale was constantly getting moved around. And so sometimes I would check my scale in the official and it would be like a pound difference. And then sometimes it would only be 0.4 different. And mm -hmm. so you know, that was another thing. I was like, I'm not really sure how far off oh, I am. How frustrating. And, um, we got down to 105 on my scale. And so mm -hmm. I was like, okay, well, let's, let's go check. Surely the last time that we checked, it was only 0.4 difference. Let's see, you know, how close I am. And so we went back up and um, it was like 105.8 and um, which is like, oh my God, it feels like, yeah. you know, animal mountain. And so we went back and we got back in the tub and like literally 20 minutes in there, um, like not sweating at all. And I'm just like, I'm really st starting to overheat. Like, honestly, I, you know, I've seen those videos of like Ioana and Cyborg and I've never had a cut like that. Like as yeah. hard as it is, it's never been that bad. Yeah. This one was, this one was pretty bad. I mean, I wasn't crying, but I was definitely, you know, at the end of my rope. Yeah. Oh and God. So definitely, and definitely something to think about. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, you, you wrote, I thought it was an amazing post apologizing to your opponent and, and to Invicta and, and, um, you know, you know, also stating that you felt very humiliated because of this. And I just wondered, you know, this stigma, you know, is it, it do you feel humiliated because of the way, you know, your peers are looking at you or is it your own self, you know, um, professionalism? I mean, did you, do you still mm -hmm. sense that, you know, others are looking at you judging you because, oh, she didn't make weight or. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm sure there's some of that. Like I feel humiliated in myself, just be, more for myself, just because um, I've always prided myself in being able to make weight. And, you know, I, I've known for weeks that this is the weight that I'm have, that I have to be. And, you know, um, I, I think a lot of people don't necessarily understand like the weight cutting process, like, Oh, she was just being lazy with her diet. Oh, you yeah, know, this no. and that. I'm like, mm. I, I swear you guys have no idea. Like, you know, everything that goes into it. Like I wasn't lazy for a second. You know, this is something, this is really the one variable that I can't control. Yeah. And, you know, even, even to, you know, kind of go further with that, like that wasn't even supposed to be an issue. Like I have an app that tracks it or whatever. And literally anytime I get called with a flight date, like that's the first thing I do is just open up my app and I check and I'm like, okay. And so when Shannon gave me the date, I was like, oh, this is going to be perfect. You know, I, I shouldn't even start my cycle for until the very next weekend. So mm -hmm. this is perfect. It won't even be an issue. And then the month before I started five days early and then in February I started three days early. So that put it at like, you know what I mean? So even trying to plan <laughs> as hard as I can, oh, God. I, I still couldn't even control it. And, oh uh, God. Wow. Wow. 
So That's it's just, like something, yeah. yeah. Very annoying. Wow. Thank yeah. you, body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, thank you for being and, you, body. <laughs> and it's like the, the wild thing is, is everybody's like, it's crazy that you even still like menstruate. Um, well, that's what I wondered too. If if it, you yeah. you know because of your highly active lifestyle, you know, physical fitness wise, all that, if you're even, you know, having a cycle, because some people, a lot of athletes don't. I do, but it's hard to predict, obviously. Yeah. Um, so, because even like a month out from the fight, I did a DEXA scan, and you know, I was like at 12 and a half percent body fat a month out. Um, and I'm, you know, and I'm still, I'm still menstruating and my body's like, screw you. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. Girl. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Well, so we're, we're definitely, we're definitely thinking about, you know, kicking around the idea of maybe going up. Cause like I said, I mean, I still made the atom weight limits, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But yeah. And had I not started my cycle, I'm 100% confident I would have made the championship limit. limit. Mm -hmm. But I feel like, um, you know, like I said, that's the one variable I can't control. And so every time I have to make championship weight, I'm playing Russian roulette. Yeah. Am I going to start? Am I not? Is it going to be fine? So... Wow. I, I mean, I would, I was actually really surprised when I heard that. And, and, uh, and then I was like, okay, there's, you know, once again, more of this story and, and, uh, geez, it's just like, you got the, 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 you know, raw card of the deal or something like that, you know, like, just, yeah. <laughs> you end up, I, I like, wow. All right. So, um, what injuries have you been dealing with too along the way since last year that, that kind of put this particular fight off for until, you know, this, in, until February of this year? Oh, well, um, I've kind of just had like some nagging in, in injuries that have been chronic, but in October, um, two weeks before the fight, um, I got headbutted wrestling and it split me open. And ah. so I had to get like six st or five stitches. And okay. so that's, that was the reason, like, I mean, I wasn't going to pull out for the other like nagging injuries that right, I had. Right. I was like, just going to deal with those, but, um, I got split open and had stitches. Yeah. So. Now I, 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 re I remember but, seeing that now yeah. that you mentioned it, I was like, what the heck happened to her that, you know, I was like going, trying to go back through and I'm like, what happened that she had to cut out of that fight. And I'm like, now I remember seeing like somewhere. Uh, yeah. And they were like, okay, you're, you know, you can't take your stitches out for like eight days. And so it's like, I mean, I would have gone into fight week, the start of fight week with stitches still. And so yeah, we're no. like, we can't be doing all that. Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, wow. Jeez. Oh my word. So, um, you know, moving forward, uh, you, you've had, I mean, so much going on. Wow. I'm like, Oh, geez. So I had this, I, you know, Invicta has like all these silly questions on their website of, you know, who you'd like to fight next and all that. And I got a big kick out of, you know, the, your, your answer, Chuck Norris. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh my God, do I know any Chuck Norris jokes? And then I'm thinking, what's your favorite Chuck Norris joke? Uh, I don't know. Can you think I, of any? I, I, I uh, think let's, of let's, any. I'll get you going a little bit. Let's see. <laughs> Chuck Norris is the reason why Waldo is hiding. I just thought that was hilarious. <laughs> You know, and then my favorite, if you're hungry, Chuck Norris spices up steaks with pepper spray. I'm like, you know, it's it's, they're just funny. like so over the top, just yeah, too much. Yeah, are there any ones that you can think of that you think are funny or that you, you know? Really kind of it's it's been a while since I've heard a good one. You know, they were super popular like back when I was in high school and stuff, but it's been a while since I've heard like a really good one. Yeah. That's pretty funny. So um, well, I just thought it was funny that I was like, wow, she really pulled that one out. I'm like, I wouldn't even thought of that ever. Like, cause I was going to ask you who, who would you want to, you know, fight, uh, you know, if, if living or dead, who would you want to fight? And then I read that and I'm like, Oh my God, that's so cute. <laughs> um, so uh, maybe possibly prepping, like, I mean, how do you see yourself, um, you know, measuring up to say the straw weight class right now? Like, have you looked at some of the fighters and, and said, oh yeah, I could beat her or, you yeah, know, like, I mean, I, I've kind of been, I, I've kind of been like watching 
the fights a little bit more closely, just even in the last week or so. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm on the fence. It's like, I hate to leave the Adam White division, mm-hmm. not on my own terms. I mean, mm-hmm. I guess this is on my own terms, but I just hate leaving it that way. Like, and my yeah. husband's like, really, are you going to cut to 105 again just to win the belt and then turn around and vacate it again? He's like, is it that big of a pride thing for you? You don't want to lose it that way. You want to give it up. I, and I'm like, it kind of is, but. Yeah. Um, I but mean, then, I get that. I get it. You worked hard for that sucker, man. I know. And it's like, once you kind of have a taste of gold, it's hard to give it up. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. I could, you know, move up and just be, you know, another person another content or I guess not even a contender, just another person in the 105 or 115 yeah. division, or I could be yeah. the champion of a yeah. division. You know what I mean? So, yeah. um, and then my husband's like, well, why don't we, I don't know. He goes, why do, there's not a clear contender at 115. He's like, why don't you throw that out there? Why don't you challenge immediately for the 115 belt? He goes, it's time for Kanako to defend her belt. Yeah. And I said, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. That's, you know, it's just something else to kind of chew on. Yeah. yeah, for yeah. God, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I'm, I'm not exactly, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty big for an atom weight. I don't feel like, I mean, I wouldn't be the biggest straw weight, but I wouldn't be the smallest either. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I really do feel like the, the weight cut really deplenishes a lot of my strength. Sure. Um, and, you know, I've had lots of people comment on how, fa- how strong I feel at the beginning of camp versus like towards the end. Yeah, because even, um, you know, like watching your strikes, say even over this last fight, Ashley's strikes, your strikes, I mean, she hit you, you know, a few times or whatever, but your strikes are point on. And when they hit, they freaking hit. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, hmm, if she had like a little more weight on her, you know, like, and I know you're looking for that knockout again. You know, yeah. maybe, maybe it going is. up in a weight class, you might get the knockout. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I it, it's, this is all speculation. It's just, I, I can't help but wonder that watching you as a fighter, if, if, you know, you had a little bit, you know, more behind it, I, I, I you know, would you get the knockout or not? And then too, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, for say straw, actually not straw weights, but staying at atom weight, it's like, who would be the next? Um, you know, opponent, would it be Ash? What is it? Ashley Zepatala? Yeah. Alicia, Alicia. you know, that's, that's something also that we had kind of talked about. And my husband's like, you know, I think, you know, Vivian Pereira had beat Alicia Zepatala their last fight, um, but Mm -hmm. she missed weight as well. And Mm -hmm. so he was like, I think she would be the the number one contender. He's like, I don't know though, because she missed weight. And then I think she came out and announced she was pregnant. And (sighs) so he's like, you know, would they do a, a, would they do one of those Phoenix rising tournaments? He's like, I don't, he's like, I'm not sure if there's a clear contender yeah. and how long would it take for them to get that ready? And, yeah. you know, he's like, yeah. you might just be sitting, if you want to stay at 105, he's like, you may be sitting out for six to eight months. Yeah. You know, while I mean, they're, you can, you can, you, can you fight both, you know, can you claim a title in both, uh, you know, Adam and can you go up and, and, and fight in straw weight? Can you do both? I don't know. It's like, I, 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 I worry that if I go up in weight and I start doing like lifting, I'm going to put on more weight and then it just makes it harder. Like, I don't know if once I go up to 115, if I'm going to be able to make 105 anymore, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Cause even, even outside of camp, like I, I still, I'm checking my weight, you know, three or four times a week. Like we have a ceiling and it's like, once I hit that number, it's like, okay, we have to start, you know, cutting, cutting back again. And like, I, I monitor my weight like year round. It would be easy for me to get it just huge, but you know, it's something that we, we monitor year round. I'm dieting even when I'm not in camp. Right. Right. Yeah. That's a, th- those are huge considerations on your part for sure. It, it is kind of exciting to have that option though, you know, like it's, it's kind of cool that, you know, you could do either or you could, you're like, Hmm, what? what should I go after next? <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you, you've had the atom weight belt, like your husband said now, you know, like, well, let's maybe go for the straw weight belt. I, I mean, I don't know. This is something that you'll have to figure out on your own, obviously, but um, it is kind of very exciting for you. And the other thing is, you know, there was some talk about, you know, UFC, and I know you're not holding your breath for this because there's no, you know, like, <sighs> they don't have an atom weight division, but if you went up to straw weight, you know, could you get pulled up to straw weight and then, you know, 
look at, you know, facing maybe, you know, Michelle Watterson or somebody like that, you know, like that, that would be another very exciting opportunity for you. And it seems like the gateway for that would be, oh, well, maybe I might get into the UFC doing this where yeah, Adam Waite might not happen. I don't know. I, you know, I just, I, I'm not sure that the Adam Waite division in the UFC is going to happen. And, and I was hanging on for so long because we had actually talked about, um, maybe a fight or two even starting to go up just when, mm. you know, like we really, really, really started had, had to start getting very stringent with um, the weight cut. Like, I mean, there, there are no cheat meals in like six weeks. Like we have, you know, every calorie counted. No cheesecake. Counted <laughs> no, no sweets, no processed food. Everything is accounted for for six weeks. Um, mm. And, you know, it's, it starts to weigh on you or it just, it starts to wear on you. You know, yeah. you, you have a bad day, you want to come home and you want to eat some comfort food to feel better. You know what I mean? You want to have a full belly and go to bed happy and that just doesn't happen. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, like I, like I said, I was kind of hanging in there, just kind of waiting to see if the Adam White division was going to, you know, come into a, a existence and it just, it hasn't. And I'm kind of losing faith that it will. And so, mm -hmm. you know, if, if I, I want a shot at getting into the UFC, then I think definitely. I have to go up to 115. Hmm. You might have answered your own question <laughs> just <Yeah>. now. <laughs> I know I like seeing you fight. I like watching you fight. I'm, I want to like see more of it. <laughs> I'm just a creature of habit. I'm like so yeah. averse to change. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. anything new, I'm like, mm, I got to, I got to marinate on this for a while. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. I'm, I'm very similar to that too. I'm, <laughs> I've had too much change in my life. Some of it, I, you know, twist my arm. I don't want anymore. Um, yeah. so on your off time, um, you know, right now you're letting things marinate and, um, I guess apparently one of your hobbies is mountaineering yes. and, and, um, what trips might you have planned, you know, in the um, next, we're going spring break to Bolivia mm. and, uh, we've been to the Andes a couple of times. We did some, um, quite a bit of trekking and some mountain climbing in uh, Peru and Ecuador previously. Mm. And so now we're trying heading, heading to Bolivia. Yeah. I saw too. You wanted to tackle Everest. and I, I'm like, you know, <laughs> one of, it's, it's like a bucket list one of these days, but I, I just, I'm not sure that I'll ever have that kind of money. Um, you know, I hear it's about a hundred grand an attempt, just an attempt. So, Holy you know, crap. I don't have just a hundred thousand dollars like yeah, laying around. around just to, try something yeah you know what I mean so you know it's it, it may be something that never happens but um yeah. if if I had the opportunity and you know ample time and opportunities to train for it because mountaineering is not a cheap hobby whatsoever well you're risking um, your life too when you go to like say something like that Everest <laughs> you know, yeah you there's um it, you know they the the mountain is like littered with dead bodies because yeah. it's too difficult to pull them down so it's like they're everywhere but yeah. um you know, given, given the right opportunity, I, I mean, I, I'd attempt it. I, okay. I don't know if so, I'd make it very far, but. so this gets into mindset and the type of mind that you have is <laughs> I wanted to go, I mean, you're a cage fighter <laughs> and, and, and do you have a death wish or something like, I mean, like a little bit in you or are you just twisted? Uh, you know, probably just twisted. Um, you know, obviously I'm not trying to die, but yeah you know, it's like plenty of people have done it. Who's yeah. why, why can't I? Yeah. I, I think the oldest woman to ever do it was like a 77 year old woman from Japan summited Everest. And I'm like, if a 77 year old woman can do it, what's stopping me? Yeah. Why right. can't I do it? Right. Wow. I have no excuse. <laughs> and it, and it's just because it's there and to try something to challenge yourself. You're always kind of like want to push it, push the envelope. Yeah. Basically. Just a little further. Yeah. Yeah. And be the best you. Be the best you in all areas of your life. Wow. That's so cool. Um, me, I watch it. Like I've watched, you know, different documentaries on it and, and um, seen into, into thin air. And my ex-husband was very fascinated by that. It was something that he was looking at, you know, I think just to study them, the, the mentality or the mindset of people that go there and then what they do when they're there. Like, um, you know, say things are going really awry or wrong or bad, 
and not only putting themselves at risk, but putting, you know, Sherpas at risk, <laughs> carrying mm -hmm. their loads and, and yeah. not actually being, you know, fit enough to climb. I mean, you're, you're obviously very fit. So it most likely wouldn't never be an issue for you, you know, physically because you're a fit person, but the people that some of the people that are going there it really have no business going there. And I, I mean, I saw the lines of people up the mountain, you know, just to get to that spot. And I'm thinking, you know, Jin wants to do this and stand in line because you would be standing in freaky line for how many <laughs> hours? hours? Yeah. There's, there's yeah. quite the bottlenecks through that one little area. Yeah. And the, and the risk, the, you know, like either side, you could fall off. I, I don't even know. Like, I, I just can't even like, I'm like, yeah, that just does not appeal to me at all. I'm like, I, ugh, I don't know. I, I think it's, it's fascinating people that actually want to do that and what it is about them. Like, what's the little seed in there? I'm like, I want to like, just open up your head and find, okay, okay, Jim, what's going on in there that you want to do that? <laughs> you know? Where you can go to so many other places and have an enjoyable climb, maybe not Everest, but you could see some amazing things and not maybe risk your life in that particular way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, you're still like, yeah, I'd like to do it. If yeah, I it's, only, I would I mean, do it's, it. <laughs> it's always interesting whenever we're taking a trip because it's like, I always want to do everything just like to the extreme. Yeah. Um, and then my husband's like, hey, I mean, I kind of want to enjoy stuff. He's like, I don't want to be like miserable the whole time and like my body dying and sore. And so it's, it's definitely a balancing act um, mm -hmm. and him trying to temper my, I guess, need for adventure. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we, we definitely have to meet in the middle and it's, we're, you know, wheeling and dealing with each other. Like, okay, well, if we do this, can we then, you know, is it okay if we do this? And mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. Because if it were up to me, we'd be doing, you know, just probably extreme stuff like all the time. Yeah. So you're a little bit of an adrenaline junkie, maybe. Are you? Kind of? Would you? You know, and I don't even know if it's like adrenaline yeah. so much. I just enjoy like doing hard things, I guess. Because mm -hmm. it's like trekking. I mean, I, it's not like my adrenaline's pumping while I'm trekking, but. Mm -hmm. um, you like hard, hard work. Because, you're yeah. a hard worker. And you like that. I, I, um, I, I know in our last couple of podcasts, you mentioned that a couple of times you have a really strong work ethic and, and, um, where do you think that comes from? I mean, I, we know your history, you know, your family history, but do you, is there anybody, you know, when you were younger that, um, instill that, or do you just think it's an innate thing that you had ever since you were little, or is it because of, um, you know, what you experienced as a child because your mom couldn't take care of you appropriately and you just, you know, a light bulb went off and said, you know, if I want to get anywhere in life, I got to do it myself. I, I think it's a little of both. I think I've always kind of had an innate um, sense of, you know, I've, I've got to, you know, I need to do, I need, I need to get my shit in order. I need to do what I need to do. But also in the sense that I understand that there's such a sense of urgency on that because I, sorry. It's okay. Oh. There's such a sense of urgency on that because I know there's no one there to like really help me if I've, there's, there's no safety net for me. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, if I didn't make the bills, I couldn't call my mom and ask her to help me with rent. I, I didn't have anyone um, that I could fall back on for help. So, um, you know, luckily I did, you know, kind of always have a strong work ethic, but it was just kind of really tempered by the fact that I knew that there's really no margin for error. Yeah. Do you, did you ever have an internal, I mean, I know we touched on this before, but did you ever have any internal battles with fear of like some people when they, they're encountering that um, kind of like, Oh my God, I got nobody to help me here. And they literally have anxiety attacks. You know, like, um, I know I've had them because I felt like, oh my God. And then I could feel myself spiral down. And because I, I was like, okay, how am I going to make ends meet? And, and then all of a sudden I would be like, oh, I can't have that self-talk, you know, like I could talk myself out of it. But I had, I mean, I'm thinking I had a really good sound upbringing. You didn't. 
and you, you still, you know, can pull yourself out of certain things. A lot of my maybe um, trauma came, you know, later in life. And then you're still dealing with trauma as a child, you know, coming out of how you grew up and stuff and then dealing with it, dealing with it. But did you ever have like, you know, some of those periods of time where you really had to come out of something that was, you were so afraid of like your, your own survival? Um, I think it's definitely very easy to get overwhelmed. Mm. Um, and I, I, I I'd be lying if I said there weren't moments where I did feel a little bit overwhelmed, like, you know, how am I going to do this? But, um, you know, luckily for me, it wasn't ever something that lasted for more than, you know, an hour or two where I'm like, Mm -hmm. you know, I can't sit around and just like boohoo, you -hmm. know, this is hard, but I just literally have to take this one step at a time. Mm -hmm. You know, the world's not going to stop turning. Nobody really gives a shit. I mean, to be honest, like that person walking down the street, like if my world is falling apart, they do not care. So yeah. me sitting here boohooing, not getting anything, not getting anything done. Like, and that's, and that's what it is. It's just starting to organize and say, okay, this is the first step. And then once we get there, okay, this is the next step. Like, because like I said, if you look at everything, it, it is easy to get overwhelmed and, you know, just to feel like the sky is falling. Yeah. Well, I mean, it just sounds to me like you did this all alone. You know, like, I mean, we've talked already two times and, and gotten some in-depth conversations. And it sounds like to me, you, you basically came to a lot of these conclusions out of intelligence, you know, like your own inner intelligence and somehow muddled through to become successful. And it's very, very um, intriguing to me for you know for some young girl i mean like they're to get through and being a female to get through these things in life and be as successful as you are in your life and just you figuring that out and i I, i'm like like wow how did you know you know like how did you figure it out because most people a lot of people don't yeah i just uh you know and a lot of times i didn't know if i was even doing the right thing but it all I could do was just move forward. You know, I wasn't coddled as a child. You know, I didn't have all this pampering or, you know, really even shoulders to cry on. It was just like, you know, it was, it was kind of a hard upbringing, upbringing, but you know, in that sense, it, it hardened me, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, do not bother me. Like it's just like water off a duck's back. You know what I mean? When times get tough, you know, it's gotta be really bad before it, you know, gets to me. Because for the most part, it's just kind of like my childhood really tempered me to adversity, I guess. Definitely. Um, I, yeah, I would say so. Because, I mean, the more we talk, the more I learn about you, I'm like, I, I, get, I become even more amazed. I think you're, you're really very special. And um, so how about a couple of fun questions and then we'll end. I'll let you go and you can take uh, you know, your dog. You have this new dog. What's your dog's name? Um, it's Freya and she, yeah. So, you know, after, after Nano passed away, I, you know, at first I was like, okay, I can't, I can't go through that again. Like I'm done. Like I'm not yeah. getting any more dogs. Like that, that was just too much. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, maybe about six months goes by and I just realized how lonely I am. And mm-hmm. I'm like, we have this other dog, but he's kind of like my husband's dog. Like they're bros and they, he always wants to go with my husband. They go car riding, they do things. And so they would leave and I'm like, it was never a big deal before because Nana was always with me. And like one night it just hit me. I was like, I'm all alone. I'm sitting here in the house by myself and then I'm really lonely. So then I kind of start perusing like Craigslist and just like shelters. And like, I'm not really actively looking. I'm just looking at pictures of dogs. I don't know what I'm looking for. Yeah. And I came across this picture of her and she was just super adorable. And I went out there and met her and the lady's like, you know, she's, she's a little timid. She's a little shy, but I think she'll come out of her shell in about a week. And I'm like, yeah, you know, any, any rescue dogs going to be pretty scared. Yeah. Like six months later, we ended up putting her on Prozac (laughs) for severe anxiety. And it took about probably four months before she'd even make eye contact with me. Oh, um, wow. I mean, she was like the exact opposite of what I was wanting, yeah. but, um, you know, I, I stuck with it. Some days were really kind of demoralizing and I'd, 
you know, just get pretty bummed out about it. And I mean, she was literally a feral animal living inside my house. Like, wow. And she was, has so, so her anxiety was so bad. She would hide all the time, never could find her. She wouldn't make eye contact. She wouldn't have anything to do with anybody. She would just like, I mean, when I brought her home, it was like three days before she finally went to the bathroom. Like she wouldn't eat. She wouldn't drink. Like she was <gasps> so stressed out. Wow. It was bad. Um, but now she's, you know, she's kind of coming around. It only took about six months for her to start. Like, yeah, she would start like kind of following me around the house. Like she didn't want to be acknowledged, yeah. but she'd follow me around. And then, you know, she'd get a little closer and then she kind of started making eye contact for a few seconds. And then she kind of, okay. So this is a really, really funny story. Like one of her favorite places to hide was behind the toilet. Um, so she'd always run to the bathroom and just hide behind the toilet. Mm. And so I kind of just got to where I was like, I'm going to stop trying. Like she's there. I'm just going to let her do her thing. I'm going to do my thing and whatever. I'm going to stop trying to like make her like me. Cause she like wouldn't take treats or anything. Like she wanted nothing to do with me. And so like one day I sit down, you know, to go pee and I feel this like little luck lick on my butt cheek. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. Head. And then that was like her thing. Like every time I'd sit down, she just like lick my butt cheek. <laughs> oh my God. That's so hilarious. <laughs> but, uh, and now, you know, now she's a really fun dog and we're starting to wean her off her Prozac. And, um, you know, I run her every day, like three to five miles. And that's been like probably the biggest help with her mental health. Like she really has come out of her shell now that she loves to go outside and get exercise and she plays with me. She comes when I call, you know, she's, she's, she's still a little off for sure. She still needs some work, but she's, she's almost normal. Wow. That's, that's a great story. My goodness. So you're saving a dog (laughs) and, 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 and helping her through, you know, you don't know, feel safe again, you know, like feel safe in, in where she, she lives and stuff. And that's awesome. Oh, I'm so happy for you. I'm glad you. And she's like the most adorable looking dog. She's so cute, but she's Mm. just like so anti, like, don't touch me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, who knows what happened to her before you got her, you know, but that's awesome. I, I, I hope um, maybe we'll see some, you know, like I, I always like seeing uh, fighters with their, their dogs, the pictures and stuff like that. Hopefully we'll see that. I, in the, you know, I, I almost brought future. her this last time. Um, she, she's an early riser though. And she likes to go out, mm. use the bathroom like six, seven in the morning. Mm-hmm. And so I checked the weather and I mean, it was like in the thirties all week in Kansas city. And I was like, okay, so it's not just like getting up and opening the door and let her out. Like mm-hmm. I got to get up, get dressed, take her outside, walk her around in the snow. And I'm not trying to do that every morning at like six or seven. Like I'm trying to sleep in, this is fight week. Right. Right. So. Yeah, for sure. I get that. And then to where she's still new to you, you don't know how she's going to behave on the road. Maybe, you know, she's yeah, comfortable like- in your setting, but may not be comfortable in a hotel or you know, that other kind of setting with other people that are strange to her, maybe. Because actually, um, I've kind of started taking her like a little bit, like I've I've done a couple of road trips and I've taken her and I've noticed that every time I put her in a new environment, it takes her like less and less time to adjust. Mm. So she's doing good. She's getting better. That's good. It's because she's being with you. Awesome. Um, So one last question. Um, What does it mean to you to be um, a female to you in this day and age in, in sports and, and how do you feel like it's evolved since, um, you know, in our culture, you know, over the course, you know, of, of your life right now, how do you feel like, uh, women's say, you know, sports have changed and your influence on it, I guess, that would be the question. You know, my husband and I were talking about this the other day and honestly, like I wasn't I mean, I, I still kind of, I, I know there's like the really early pioneers, but I still kind of feel like a little bit of a pioneer for women's mm-hmm. MMA. Um, you know, when I first started, you know, for the first couple of years, like I never had female training partners. Um, you know, it was still kind of taboo. Like there was never female fights. You know, it was mm-hmm. really hard to find fights. You had to travel like far and wide, you know, fight mm-hmm. above your weight. Um, and so, I mean, I do kind of feel like a little bit of a pioneer. And it's incredible to see, like, my husband coaches now, and he coaches children. And um, I went for the first time the other day to watch. And, I mean, there's, like, 50 kids in these classes. They're 
cute. It's, it's chaos. It is absolute chaos. Um, (laughs) Mm. but I would say like almost half of the students are girls and there's actually one girl who's just like a total little badass. She's like eight. And, um, they were playing like King of the mountain and they were doing like wrestling, like live goes and nobody could take her out. She's and like all of their, her opponents, um, were boys because my husband started choosing her opponents Mm because she was getting good like nobody could take her down so then he started choosing like the older and the bigger boys and like it's incredible to see like you know little girls and Mm -hmm. and her dad is just like this is exactly why I've put her in martial arts like I want her to be able to defend herself I want her to be confident and she's taken down you know boys that are 12 and 13 years old and she's only eight and she's just like She's a little badass. Cool. That's cool. That's awesome. That's so cool. It, it's great hearing that. And, um, and I'm sure, you know, being a part of it, and it's great that your husband's doing that. And, um, you know, we'll see what comes because I know there's more talent coming up through the, the ages right now. Um, it's been really great having you on the show again. And I really appreciate your time and uh, coming in and checking in with us. This has our, been our third interview. I'll look forward to another one. It's always a pleasure. I really enjoy our talks. I, I, I don't know if you've listened to them, but they're really like, you know, I go through them and I have to listen to them again and again, like when I'm, when I'm uploading them. And there are my favorites. And I listen to this stuff, you know, that we've talked about and I'm like, holy crap, whoever isn't listening, they should be listening to this podcast and listening to somebody who becomes a champion and successful in their life and, 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 you know, leading an extraordinary life and, you know, and to learn from people like yourself. And it doesn't even have to be, they don't have to be, you know, an athlete of any kind. Um, They could just be an ordinary person, you know, going to the gym and they could get so much value out of listening to someone like yourself. So I really appreciate you coming on the show and I can't wait to see you fight again. And, you know, I, you know, if you make any decisions, I'd love to get you on and find out what you're going to do next prior to, you know, your next fight. You know, we got like this whole year ahead. I'm sure there's got to be another fight, um, hopefully in the cards um, soon, probably before the end of this year, we've got several months ahead. So hopefully we'll see you soon. And so, Anything you want to, any shout outs, you know, to your team or, you know, where people can find you, you know, you can, you know, Instagram, whatever you can go. (laughs) Um, Yeah. You can find me on, uh, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook and um, I think I I have a Twitter account. I don't really follow it. So if it's like, if you actually want to reach out, touch base, you know, ask a question, whatever. um, I'm the best at getting back to you on Instagram. That's at Jen Fry. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jen. You're welcome. Bye-bye, honey. Bye. So, wow. I'd like to thank Jen Fry for coming on the show again. That was her, the third time she's been on the show. And if you, you want to learn more about her, you have to check out episodes 33 and 51. Uh, we get really more in depth and talk about a lot of great things. Uh, she's really um, an awesome fighter. And I can't wait to see what she decides to do. If she will, you know, stay at atom weight or move up to straw weight. Um, your guess is as good as mine, but um, we'll have her back on the show again and, and find out more then. But until then, if you enjoyed the episode, please go ahead and leave a review because it helps people find the show. And on that review, please mention Jenny Fry and how she might have inspired or motivated you. And if you like what you heard today and are eager to hear more, never miss an episode from Evolve WMMA and moi, Shelly Devine, by remembering to subscribe, download on iTunes, or you can find us at Podomatic and Spotify at Evolve Women's MMA. Or if you prefer to watch, uh, you can find a new episode on YouTube at Women's MMA. And lastly, if nothing else, You can simply follow us at facebook.com backslash I love WMMA. This is Shelly Devine. Until next time, thanks for listening.